Welcome to... Hi, hope you're well. Today we're gonna cover a little bit of spinal waves. So there are many variations. So I was sort of planning to cover as many as we can. I'm sure I might miss some, but there are so many variations on the theme of uh, spinal waves. So uh, the main principle behind spinal waves is ability uh, of person to actively in a fluid uh, sort of motion to, s to work on segmentation of each part of the spine so neck, upper spine, thoracic spine, mid back, lower back or lumbar spine and so on but also including the hips, obviously pelvis, hips and the knees okay so we have a couple of parameters we're gonna start first with the, the most basic one if you ever did yoga class or anything similar, so simple motion of rolling the spine down, okay, so this is how you can start, so standing comfortably, feet comfortably apart, okay, so think about tucking your chin to the chest, rounding your shoulders, rounding your upper back, mid back, lower back, if you need to bend your knees here, be free to bend your knees, okay, you can go either in a squat or you can stay in this forward fold and then what you're going to do, bend your knees even more, roll your spine back up, okay? And you can repeat that a couple of times. So that would be basic roll down and then rolling back up. And again, rolling the spine down either in a squat or staying in forward fold, bend your knees again as much as you need to because you don't want to feel too much strain so spinal waves ideally you don't want to make them too strenuous so you should be relatively or at least intention being to do them as effortlessly as you can okay so one of the basic next ones that I really like is a kneeling variation that we already covered in some of the classes and routines so think about hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, elbows are straight, that's going to be your limitation. So think about rounding as much as you can, as you round your spine, you're tucking your chin to the chest, and then arching, as you arch, you're going to go up with your head, okay? Rounding and arching, okay? But we're going to combine that with side twists. So think about expanding the ribcage on one side, and the other side. So I always like to say, think about central axis going from your head all the way through your spine, okay? And you're going to rotate around that. But remember, as you're going in one direction, your head is sort of traveling in the other direction. So don't keep your head passive. So pick a direction, for example, and let's give it a go. So arching, twisting toward one side, rounding, other side, and again, continue. Try to make it as smooth as you can. Expand your rib cage, flex your spine, extend. Flexing usually means rounding, extending, arching. And then you can change direction at any point. Keeping it nice and smooth. So this is a very nice way to sort of work already, to have quite nice uh, range of motion, hopefully decent range of motion on your spine, okay? So we have rolling down and then we have kneeling variation. One of the most obvious next ones would be uh, rotations, so thoracic or lumbar rotations. So I like to combine this one with some motion of the arms, okay? So keeping your feet stuck to the floor, think about head or chest going in one direction, then other direction, okay? I just lost balance. Okay? One direction, other direction, keeping your arms relaxed. As you're focusing on the spine, you don't need to go too crazy with your arms. Keep them nice and relaxed next to your body. So chest leading, heels on the floor, okay? So this will be sort of basic rotation or side to side twist while you're standing. So we have rolling the spine down and up. We have kneeling variation, sort of rotation, uh, 360 rotation. 
and then we have a side to side twist. Okay, so those three will be sort of basic, basic variations. For someone who's really struggling with doing these more advanced variations, I would start with those. Uh, and then we have probably one of the, the most famous one, at least in movement culture, I've uh, seen uh, head leading in sagittal plane, which is this plane of motion, okay? So the way I like to start with this one, think about observe from the side, creating a non-stop circle with each part of your spine. Head initiates the motion, then the motion, like a ripple effect, it travels down towards the floor, okay? So the best way to do this is to use a wall. Stand not too close, not too far. And it's okay if initially you feel a little bit stiff and it's, if it doesn't feel super natural. The more you do it, the, the more uh, comfortable you actually start getting with the motion, okay? Just forget, common mistake, don't forget, common mistake is to engage your shoulders and start using your shoulders too much. Your arms and your shoulders are completely relaxed, okay? So think about leading with your chin, then going with your chest as your chin goes back, belly, hips, and then going back. I may come a little bit closer to make it a bit easier. And again, chin, chest, belly, hips. Chin, chest, belly, hips. So notice as I'm going with my chin, and then as I'm transitioning to my chest, I'm retracting, I'm moving my head back, tucking my chin to the chest, okay? As I'm sort of peeling off layer by layer as I'm going down. So again, chin, chest, belly, hips, and then going down in the knees. Chin, chest, belly, hips. So it's okay if initially it looks like chin, chest, belly, hips, or knees. Uh, you're gonna get smoother the more you do it. So you can spend some time on the wall here, facing the wall. When you get more comfortable, then you can start doing it freestanding, okay? You can even close your eyes if you wish. You can even start walking around if this feels comfortable enough, okay? Just keep it nice and light. So if you can see, if you can notice, there's no sudden stops and starts, there's constant, the, the intention is, and the goal is to have constant fluid motion, okay? Leading from your head and then going down. You can also play with parameters like tempo or range, so it can be very subtle. Or it can be very, how far can you go forward? Or how far can you go back? When you get comfortable with two legs, you can even play with one leg, which is fairly advanced variation. The task would be, if you're standing on one leg, how can you make this impulse travel all the way down into the leg, okay? So continuing the ripple effect, an impulse from your head down towards the leg. Also, much more balance uh, required. Okay, so this was head leading, and then we have hips leading, or instead of creating the impulse going from your head down, you pushing into the floor and then creating the ripple effect going upwards, okay? So some people might even find this one potentially easier, sort of uh, more natural than the previous one. You can give it a go. Again, you can start same position against the wall. So you're gonna start with your knees, thighs, hips, belly, chin. Knees, thighs, hips, belly, chest, chin. You can move slightly further back. Knees, belly, chin. And start thinking less and less. Again, keeping your arms completely relaxed as you start going more and more in this fluid motion. Common mistake here is you be mindful of your uh, neck. As you go up here, don't sort of drop your head forward. Keep it nice and controlled. Your head can even stay in the same position almost, 
be free to include the head motion, but slow down that sort of whiplash, uh, that motion forwards, okay? And again, if you get comfortable with this, on two feet, you can start moving around. You might notice it's much more difficult to move uh, around the space with impulse traveling from your feet upwards, okay? And if even that is okay, you can then start playing with one single leg balance. I'm quite bad with this one, with this variation. You might notice at some point you just transition into head leading, which is completely fine, okay? So we have head leading, we have hips leading, and next, what I would uh, recommend, uh, what I would teach always is going sideways. So think about drawing infinity or number eight or being a snake. So if you're in this position, feet comfortably apart, your head is going to lead, but you're going sideways. Try not to rotate your chest too much, going with your shoulders forwards and backwards. Keep your chest sort of in the same plane of motion. As you're leaning towards one side, bending the same knee on the side where you're going towards, going as far as you can, keeping your feet on the floor. Then when you're in this end range, so head leads, rest of the spine and body catching up. As you're in this far end, your head is leaning towards the other side and initiates motion on the other side, okay? Arms completely relaxed as you're going from side to side. So we're gonna again use the wall for this one. I'm gonna stand here. Wall is there just for you to sort of think about drawing the, the circle snake-like motion with your nose and not rotating your chest too much, okay? So if you're starting in this position, going towards one side as far as you can, be, you, you need to make sure your knees are soft. If I keep my knees straight, I can't really travel. It's quite, quite limited, okay? So side flexing, going towards one side, other side. So as I'm arriving at the end range of one side, then I'm leaning my head back. And there's always this slight delay with the body, okay? So head goes first, then body catching up, shoulder, rib cage, obliques, side, hips, and so on, okay? As you go from side to side, as you get more comfortable, again, can move away from the wall, you can do walking variation and so on. So be free to experiment. Uh, one of the slightly harder variations is think about central axis of your spine going from the top of your head all the way down into the floor, similar to when we were kneeling. We're gonna have this rotation, but now in standing position. So you want to make sure your pelvis is fairly your pelvis is fairly solid, okay? I always like to even hold my hands here as I'm doing the next one. So think about this. Think about keeping your shoulders in the same level as you're rotating with your chest or you're drawing the circle with your spine, with your chest part of your spine around this imaginary central axis, okay? So think about in this position while keeping your shoulders in one line and your pelvis side flexing or sort of shifting, gliding with your ribcage on one side, then other side, one side, and other side. Good thing to do this is to do this is in front of a mirror, just so you can have some uh, feedback. Immediate feedback is always good. Okay, so one and other side. Shoulders staying on the same level, hips staying on the same level. Next one then will be if you observe from this side, shoulders staying on the same level, almost like someone is pressing your sternum, your chest bone, and pushing the air out of your lungs as you're rounding, and then someone is doing the motion from the back forward, and then arching your upper spine. Really tempting to move shoulders, try not to. So again, pushing back, pushing forwards, pushing back, pushing forwards, okay? So we have right, back, left, 
forwards. And then when you sort of get comfortable with this, you can start playing slowly, pick a direction. Think about being in front of the mirror, keeping your pelvis in line, shoulders sort of in the same level. If they start moving a little bit, that's fine. You don't need to be too rigid. So pick a direction. Let's go to the right. And then gradually connect these pieces. And you're probably going to notice one side is a bit more natural, feels more natural than the other one. When you finish with one side, you can slowly transition on the other side. and then you can play with these parameters. It might take you a little bit longer for this one to practice, okay? Uh, there's another one that I'm going to add, which is sort of neck rotation, but rather than just doing these basic rotations that anyone, if you start, if you feel stiff in your neck, you're going to probably do this motion. There's one motion that we don't really do that much and it's actually, and it's available, it's there for everyone, although you might notice it feels very sticky and grindy in your neck when you start initially do this. Uh, if you ever saw a Bollywood movie, the way they dance uh, with their necks, that gliding motion, so you're gonna sort of try to replicate that. This one is super useful if you're doing it in front of the mirror. So, if your shoulders are in the same level, and your sort of chin is on the same level, what you're trying to do first is as you're placing your fingertips here, try to glide with your head or your chin outside of your chin towards one side, then other side. I'm probably quite bad with this, demonstrating this right now, as I didn't do it for a while. So think about your face is staying in the same position as you, similar to this part, this uh, thoracic uh, rotations, as you glide towards one side, then other side. Fingers here are just are just serving you as a feedback, okay? So one side, other side. Next one will be probably the obvious. Think about someone pushing from this neutral position, going forward as much as possible, like a turtle. Head face facing forward, and then backwards. Think about tucking your chin, making a double chin if you can. Forward, backwards forwards, backwards, forwards, and backwards. So this one, you feel a little bit uncomfortable or maybe a bit weird, stick to it and, and see how it goes. When you cover these elements, going right, left, one side, other side, and then forwards, backwards, then you're going to try to combine these elements, and again, going from this central axis, around this central axis that goes from the top all the way down towards the floor. So going forward, one side, other side, and continue, keeping the shoulders as steady as possible. And then other side, and again, you may notice one side feels a bit more natural than the other one, but that's fine. You can do this for time, you can do it very subtly, you can go as far as you can, and so on. Interesting variation that you can play with. And I'll just, I promise this is the last one, I'm just going to add one more, uh, which is going to be from a uh, variation from, that I learned from uh, Animal Flow, which is on its own combination of disciplines, dance, uh, capoeira, uh, yoga, and so on. Uh, so, you're starting in this position, we did it on one of the classes. If you're in this position, like a frog, knees on the side, I'm sitting on my hips, my hands are in front, if I'm here, I'm going to lift my hips up, go on my toes. I, can all, I always like to turn my hands slightly outwards so I can reach forward with my shoulders. So lifting my hips up, squeezing my abs, rounding my spine as I'm keeping my arms straight and reaching forward, keeping my chin tucked into my chest. And then going from this spinal flexion or rounding into spinal extension, keeping my glutes squeezed and opening my spine, not collapsing, so pushing down through my shoulders and then going back. And again, lifting up, rounding. So from the side, it's going to resemble a wave. Rounding, arching. So notice how I'm keeping my chin tucked into my chest all the way up until my hips are lowering down, then you're lifting your he uh, head up, okay? 
And in this bottom position, you might notice you're squeezing your glutes as the intention. And also in the top position, externally rotating your shoulders, squeezing your shoulders out. So one more time, hips up, rounding, squeezing my abs, posterior pelvic tilt. And so, so this is it. Now you have more than few uh, spine wave uh, patterns. I think I actually covered all of them that I wanted to cover. Uh, so be free to pick one and then just play with it, especially if you're still learning it, or you can just start combining all of them in one sort of nice routine, either in a static position or as you move uh, across the room. So thank you so much. I uh, hope you in, enjoyed this section. Uh, just a word of, uh, not warning, but a sort of advice. Sometimes, especially if you're sitting a lot and you didn't move for a while and then you suddenly start with all this, you realize, oh, I have all these motions available in my spine, your body might react, oh, this is uncomfortable, this might even be a little bit painful, that's completely fine. That's always Initially, it can happen, but trust me, the more you, you do it, uh, the more sort of body aware, spine aware you're gonna be. Uh, and like with any training, the more you do certain things, your body's gonna adapt. Okay, so stick to it, and you're definitely gonna feel some uh, see some gains. So thank you so much, and see you soon.